Hey guys, Ooh, not me filming my intro as when I'm done with playing the game. Hey guys, welcome to Kai's Cast, where I play games and whoa, well, the games play me. So today we're gonna be playing another part of Killer Frequency. I thought it was gonna be the last part, that's why I'm redoing the intro, but it's not the last part. So we'll be uploading the next part in like a couple days just so we can get this series done. And I know you guys wanted to know what happened, but best believe when you guys see this plot twist, Bro, it's crazy. I'm I'm telling you to stay tuned because it's crazy. If you haven't watched other videos, go watch it. What are you doing? Why are you here? Guys, make sure to subscribe um, because I will be having polls. I'm just communicate with my community and just asking what games you guys want me to play. And you don't want to miss that. I mean, you don't want to miss that. Right? Right? Let's just get into the game. I'm telling you, bro. This plot twist goes crazy. Continue. All right, guys, man. It has been a long journey. We've lost people. We resurrected That's such people. Such a good song, folks. And now for Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Okay, so that's what something happened. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. What? Let's start from the beginning. The, uh... All right, so yeah, so we went outside. We saw the whistling man actually outside, and that was a little bit terrifying. Why did you um... heave that thing all the way up here? He would. Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement. Yep. Made by our creepy janitor. Yep. Who you think is the creepy whistling man. Period. Yep. Yes. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Yes. Correct. And you think one of these people Great will be recap. the whistling man's Clive's next target? Yes. That's right. And we've got to find them. You said there are four locations listed there too? The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're going to have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. Oh, okay. So we have the board up here. Okay, 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 okay. Alright, so, again, last episode, if you haven't watched it, go watch it. If you haven't even watched the series and you saw this video, what are you doing? Go, what are you doing? Go drink some milk, because I don't know what you're doing. Guys, go watch the first... Whew. Anyways, yes, in the last video, we saw that Clive, our janitor, had all this stuff put up everywhere. And I honestly didn't know what to do about it. So I'm guessing uh, we're putting together like evidence of where, of who he might target next. So yeah, let's get it. We would like to celebrate the marriage of Kim Walker and Peter Stein. All right, crime syndicate, who is this about? Here by we refer to as R.A. 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 over Rebecca Allen. I'm guessing it's anything that mentions them, but I don't see how this... Oh, Tyler Wallace. Oh, I'm sick of being a celebrity. People are so mean to me. I only sold a few cars. Who cares? Buy a new one. I'm selling my trailer and leaving town ace. I just want to get out of here. Please buy it. Wow, yo. Why are you getting mad? You're a felon. Why are you getting mad? Alright, guys. We can't let nobody die, man. We already hurt Murphy, man. Let's do this, man. I'm sure. Let's do this. Okay, name first. Who do you think the target is? Oh, frack, is that Tom right? Okay. I mean, I don't know. How am I supposed to know who I think the target is? Can we just call them all? Why, why are we doing this? I'm gonna say it's that girl though, low key, Rebecca Allen. Let's say Rebecca. Rebecca Allen. And where will I find them? Trailer park. The trailer park. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. I hope. Or will she be at the gas station because she's trying to leave town? I don't know. I don't know.
Forest, I'm through to the trailer park, but... They say there isn't anyone by that name there. What? Then who? Jeez! Ah! It sounds like something blew up! He's using bombs now? Oh. My. God. The call board, it- What is going I, on? I don't know what to do. One moment. Forrest, I'm getting so many calls. Just let me- Awesome I'm music. gonna take us off air for a moment. Okay. Well, you do that, I'm gonna look, because I don't- Peggy, what's happening in there? Trail park. Peggy. That all leads to her. I'm back. He blew up the gas station for us. Who died? Okay. I spoke to the fire department and the hospital. Who died? The fire department is useless now, as you know. And, uh... The hospital's <sighs> only ambulance was at the gas station. Forrest, he blew up the only... You've got to say something on the radio. Say what, girl? You have to tell the town. I'm putting us back on air. Now. Gallows Creek. I don't know how to tell you this, but, uh... The what gas station's on? been bombed. Please, everyone, stay safe, stay inside, and oh, just bring us into some Sorry, music, guys. Forrest. Here's what if some I say let's blow this up? We regroup here on KFAM 189.16, The Stream. There's got to be more oh. in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can so get ahead of him. Ambulance? Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you mean me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I don't want to go there, I please. still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. Peggy. Peggy, uh... She just want me to die. She does not care about my well-being. Just don't want him being here. Hmm. A key? Was this always here? I must have Where? missed it when I brought everything upstairs. What key? Did y'all see a key? Because I didn't. Oh, I didn't be taken. I'm stupid. It said basement storage. Where's that at? Oh, up here? This doesn't look ominous at all. Oh, wait. Not that. Hey, Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down the intercom. Oh, sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Oh, you can play it in here, but... George Bell. <sighs> 1968. That's when this all began for me. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death. I don't know what this stuff is. Delivery note, Starling security. Oh, hold on. Hold on. This is a delivery note for a um alarm system and i think this is all the places he hit or what was another one small lacerations to arms legs and face 
typically obtained by running through foliage, severe mm. blistering to the feet, as though the deceased had been running without stopping. Oh, but this is getting creepy now. Another one? Additionally, there appears to be a post-mortem injury to the arm. It looks like it was trapped in a car door. If you're listening to this, then I'm probably dead. <gasps> what the? I'm a man who He's likes a to stay dead. informed. I've got subscriptions to newspapers all over the country. I see. A few weeks ago, I noticed headlines cropping up in those papers, one after the other. Each headline about a murder. Bro, this is crazy. Each murder, the death of someone I knew almost 20 years ago. And each one drawing closer to Gallows Creek. Drawing closer to the anniversary. Mm -mm. None of us are innocent. But I don't think we deserve killing. So Clive isn't it? I mean, that All was too I obvious. Know is that I can save some folk from the worst. So Clive knew who he was going to target. I don't know. Do something to make up for what I did back then, I guess. I didn't kill anyone, mind you. But that's past mattering. No. There's more I could say than I should say. But my employer made it clear that my family would pay a high price if I ever spoke out. So, hopefully I've said enough for you, listener, whoever the hell you are, to start putting the truth together. Yo, Clyde is dead? What the hell? Peggy is not going to believe this. No, she not. Let's hurry up before we get caught up in some. Oh, intercom. What have you found, Forrest? It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. How'd she know Poor it was down George. here? George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. It's the girl who Seriously? wanted that music. That, um... Do you think you've met her before? That take that Peggy know. threw out I mean, the window. I just got here recently. I don't know. Found another tape. It talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes. Getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? What? Yeah, after oh, he died. Poster. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. I, um, I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. He gone? I found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. Wow. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the whistling man already got him? Possibly. Good. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. Oh my Christ, God. Morris, that's dark. I know, but well, Clive Peggy? said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident, and the mm. killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. He said he wanted to do something mm. good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. To save them. He was tracking them down to save them. Yes. Why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Isn't he work oh, for k Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you'd killed all those people. Do you think you found everything, Forrest? I think there's gotta be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. I think so. How much did Clive hide down there? I know. Well, if there are more tapes, 
then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right, then. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. What have you found, Forrest? There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. It was in the newspaper and everything. Do you think you found everything, Forrest? I think there's got to be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. You think so? How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more, more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All I right wish you had a countdown, like how many. Find the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Oh, I'm so stupid, y'all. These pictures were showing the locations of the tapes. Oh, there it is. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and dropped. Is that lady? Following that, he was moved. That bill has to be important. We need to have a talk. That recording. Shut it off. Well, what is going on? Let me let me go tell Peggy, Peggy, look what I found. What have you found, Forrest? In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. Moved hmm. the body? How weird. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded the doctor... Stop Dr. Recording. Sullivan? To stop recording. Dr. Sullivan? Wait, Virginia Sullivan? She was her caller from earlier. Well, then our caller was involved in a conspiracy around this boy's death. Wow. We need to call her back once we finish down here. It looks like she might know something about what's going on. I found a written autopsy report. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But that contradicts the tape. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with the report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Wait, the caller from earlier. When we had to call the takeout restaurants, wasn't her name Virginia? Do you think you found everything? I think so. Oh, thank God. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone oh, wanted that me. boy's death to seem like an accident. And they so, hired Clive to make it look that way. Uh, hired him? Is he like a hitman? Like janitor or something? We need to figure out our next step. Hey, let me not say too much, because, you know, America might make that a movie. Janitor turned, or hitman turned janitor. So that's something they would do. God, you can't you're lie. back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. Girl, I'm be being Yossi. Forrest, I'm stressed. I mean, really. How are we supposed to keep a show going with all this happening? Girl, it's your job. This is our job, Peggy. We, we gotta, we gotta do, do it. it. <sighs> you want right. to help these people, so, so let's hurry up and help now? them. I think we should call Virginia back. All right, I'll get her on the line. When you're ready, shut the music off. Not bad. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers, Virginia Sullivan. Virginia, better answer. Fredman Plunker here. Who's this? Is it you? Oh, Virginia's the one we saved with the Fredman. Plunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Forrest Nash. Radio Man? What's, What's up? up? Yo, I so love that episode. Lives, the when huge. they saved her. Right, right, right. That was right, so amazing. Right on. 
Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? Shh, she asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. <laughs> so we're hanging out, bro. <laughs> Why is there a phone? Let's Can you answer that? Plunker. No, <laughs> it's nothing. Bro, Plunker, bro. This Can guy's actually a like, Speak to Virginia. Funny. Sure thing, Radio Man. <gasps> I'll just go get her. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm. I'm glad you're still okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, Forrest. I'm happy she Sorry, didn't die. I'm still jumping. Cause that would have been bad. Don't be sorry. You've been through a lot. I'm so yeah. sorry this happened to you, Virginia. I thought I was. I thought. Girl, like, just imagine she died. Who we asked? Should be dead. Easy. Get? We're not calling to talk about earlier. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Yeah, Virginia. Me? What would I know? Clive, that's what I'm gonna say. Does the name Clive mean she anything to you? She should have said Clive, Clive, period. No. I don't know that name. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. Virginia is such I an idiot. I what I said then. I was petrified for us. Bro, she's Clive's stupid. the janitor at our station. And we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. Why so certain? Yeah, why are you so certain? Why are you so certain Clive's the whistling man? Because he... All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... We didn't see nobody. Well, and we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. One day... I came into work to find a... a boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this... man, Clive, he just burst in. And... he started making demands. To give over the reports? To falsify what I found? Of course I said no. But... well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. He used the stick, didn't he? For me, he used both. He used both? You see, my sister is sick. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. I had to sit there. It's expensive listen. to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, He'd beat me to within an inch of my life. Oh, Clive. I don't know why he had Sir. me do it, but my sister needed me. Sir. You have to understand. She needed me. We understand. I hate when that happens. Because what are you going to do? Just going to leave your sister? Thank you, Virginia. Well, it's your sister. That like, God, that's, that's I what's just hard want this nightmare that, to so. end. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? Can't tell you, girl. We could try Sandra. What would Sandra know? I don't know, but we have to start somewhere. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. Who's I'll Sandra? be careful. All right, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. Is this the girl I saved? Aha! Uh -huh. wow. Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. It is! Hello What's up, again, Sandra? Sandra? What's up? It's Forrest Nash of 189.6. I had to go back and save her, screen. guys. I had to. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. How jazzy. What can I do for you? 
Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. We had a few questions. By forest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Oh! That sounds like... Let me stop playing. Be freaking for real. But why are Do we you know it? why the whistling man we're just gonna let that brush off my shoulder? Ha! Because Peggy will get jealous. He was just a knife-wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. He just She's so funny. Anybody. Right. All these characters well, are funny. We think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Don't play no games. No, let's see how you keep your mm. secrets. Have you had to keep quiet about anything? Any secrets you've had to keep? Oh, who trying to see why he's targeting these about? people? I, I don't see. know. I mean, I could be that you've seen something or heard so something. So this guy's mad that everybody covered up George's death. I did, what would that matter? And it was years ago. You okay? Sandra? Are you okay? I want to say drop the egg. Ago. Spit it out. Years ago what? Come on, Sandra, spit it out! I... Oops! I'm so stupid. Oh, Peggy told me Jerry's to home. be I careful. Go. I'll drive home now or just drive. I'm... I don't, why did he yell? I was like, come on, Sam, just spit it out. Well, like, that's how I was going. I might have gone a bit hard on her. A she bit? could have. All right, all right. Peggy, let's you be quiet. Move on. That was Little my fault, folks, but I didn't think he was going to yell. If anyone out there has any thoughts on I what's said, going on, on Sam, tonight, just spit it out. Please, that's it. call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. All right, call. Let's see who's Welcome saving today. Welcome to 9.16, The Scream, with me, your host, Forrest Nash. Hi, Boris. I know this is really Ponty's pizza, bro. blue with everything happening tonight. But I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. No, I want to say you no. You know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. I should have said no. I'd be glad to. Thank you, Boris. He's my uncle Ronnie. Pepperoni? His first name's Peter. But he pizza never Ronnie? liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday? Pepperoni! Mr. Pepperoni. I... Oh my god damn it! <laughs> yes! Tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza. Yo, Start they fell for that. You son so of it. Stop calling us. How do you not Sorry, recognize his voice? Let's just move on. We've already got another caller on the line. Yo, I will go to the pepperoni. I will go to the pizza place just so I can meet him because he is actually so funny. This is 189.16, The Scream. So I'm great Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> caller. He's laughing. <sighs> Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man. We'll Peggy, you can do a better job of screening these calls because you're supposed to be screening them. I watch Fraser, and you are not doing too hot. Forest. Peggy, be quiet. Forrest? Screen these calls. Are you okay? <sighs> yeah, Forest, what are you doing? Calm down. Forrest? Ain't that serious? I hope. The whistling man gets him with his own pizza slicer. Oh, Jesus, Forrest? That was too much. Sorry, sorry, that was... That was too much. Too much. It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Like, how you Don't say worry that? about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're we ready. We might actually have to split this in two, because I think it's going to be longer than I expected. So, this might not be the final Folks, one. Folks, don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's... Pizza All I'm gonna good. say about that. I'm right now. Honestly, car mm, moving along, good. I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with broke. me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. 
Ah, I she bet wants I know why you're calling. I'm sorry I didn't play your song. There's a lot she going on. She wanted me to rain to my but rainforest. Please? Uh, never mind that now. First, yeah. I'm calling because I need your help. Are you in danger? Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Helping? What did you freaking do? Helping? You didn't exactly help. Maybe I've been helping more than you know. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. Mm -hmm. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. You probably were. Back to my apartment building. If you have that feeling, you're being followed, guys. Security so I'm just saying. Has me locked out. We humans? I need you to help me get inside. We're smarter than what we think. Okay, she needs help getting inside. Ask a neighbor. Can a neighbor let you in? Uh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here. Only the, the keypad for the entry code. Okay. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the new Woodside apartment building between the town hall and the trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I doze. I doze off when I was like listening. I didn't memorize estate. that. The sound really carries at night. <laughs> Shit. Sounds like a noisy part of town. It is. Boy, yeah. I wish he muscled that thing in. Oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. This night can't get any. It's coming down the street. I don't think he's seen me yet. Forrest, please. I need your help. I need the code for that security system. Do you know where that's at, y'all? Yeah. Security system's mm, name. What's bro. the name of the security system? I think I know. Uh, yeah. On the box, it says Starling Security. security I should have brought it up here. There's keypad. And it looks like it wants a, a six-digit number. Apartments. Let's <sighs> right, we'll it. see what we can do. Thank you, Forrest. Yeah, of Peggy, don't, don't talk too much. Let me Thank go get you, it. Forrest. I knew I could count on you. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. All right, folks. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy. While I try to break Dawn into her apartment. Glass processor, baby. No. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. She actually yeah, was. Forrest, was it just me, or was there something? Yeah, it, it wasn't just you. Something was weird about that. The whole call yeah. was weird. There's well, something going on. Tell you what, we have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who, but to help someone. All right, let's get it. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starling 4000. I know where it's at, trust me. Right there. Starling 4000. Look at that, guys. Bro, I'm so smart. Ah, Give me a pat on the back. These like codes this video. should come in handy. I'm trying to look at the pamphlet before we get in there, you know, just to get ready because we cannot let nobody die. Because it seems like if we keep them alive, it actually helps us in the end, so... Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The Starling yeah. 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. When you're ready, shut the music off. Line one, whenever you're ready. Don, are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I've been so afraid. What's the code to the gate? Sorry, entry code, yeah? The code is 715-914. Thank you, Forrest. Yo, she really took me to rain to the forest. Forrest, what did we do? What? 
Let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens. Forrest, there's another call coming in. Evening, caller. You're live on... Oh, oh. Forrest! Oh. The psycho's somewhere in the roller rink, dude. I just saw a shadow. Oh my god. god Wait. How do you even get in? She was lying. You've got to help me, man. Forrest. She was lying. Maxie, no. Come back. She just broke into an apartment complex, and that's what she I said. Thanks, rifles, Forrest. Yo, she lied. Who is dying? Let anything happen to <laughs> Maxie! <laughs> oh my god, he killed his dog. What is good? Oh, this is too much. There's too much. Maxie! <laughs> the one time. I, I should have got it wrong for her. <laughs> I should have known. We didn't hear no whistling. <laughs> she said thanks. Maxie. <laughs> Oh, God, poor Ricky. Okay, Gallows Creek, here's some music while we process what just happened. So Don's the whistling man? The Don's the whistling man? So the whistling man. I told y'all, I'm getting the series. Woman? I bet you it's a woman. I said it. Yeah, I worked it out. Yeah, I worked it out a while ago. Yeah, sure, Forrest. You just never mentioned it. Bro, it was a theory. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Oh my god, and that's why she said the tape should be down there. She was outside looking at us, y'all, because she knew we were going to be outside. This plot twist. What? Plot quest? It's definitely a quest. This plot twist?